Now today we're showing on how to test the starter solenoid. Now what may happen to you is you attempt to start your vehicle and all that you hear is click, click, click. It's the perfect sign that the solenoid is no longer good. Now I'll also show you a trick which many of you may already know on how to maybe get one or two more starts out of that vehicle. Quite easy to test. All that you need is a digital multimeter. These are like 15 bucks off Amazon. I'll have a link for this one if you do need one. So let's jump over to the vehicle. So this is where the starter lives on this vehicle. And I'll give you a different shot in a moment showing on how I remove the battery and the battery tray. But that being said, every starter or most starters look very, very similar. You have two cylinders, a large cylinder and a small cylinder. The larger cylinder is your armature housing, and the smaller cylinder, this is the solenoid. Now the solenoid provides large voltage to the starter motor. So when you hear click, 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 that simply means this cannot provide enough power to the starter motor to turn the flywheel and crank the engine. That's the whole point here. So there's a couple of things you may be thinking. How can I find the starter on my vehicle? Two techniques. Number one, find the positive lead going to the battery and follow the wiring and it will lead you to the starter okay so that's option one option two is just do a web search specific with your vehicle and very often you can find diagrams showing where the starter lives on your vehicle some vehicles yep you can get access to these on top others you have to go from underneath the vehicle so every vehicle is different but that being said let me just quickly show you how I removed the battery, the battery tray, and that allowed me access to the starter. Now the first thing I'm going to do very quickly is use PB Blaster. You can also use WD-40, and that's to just make it easier when you remove the fasteners. Also, if you live in a winter climate, you don't want these to snap on you. And these typically are 10 millimeter fasteners. And you don't have to completely remove them. So you have these J hooks. There we go. Holding these on. Okay, just like these. Be careful. You don't want to hit the positive and negative terminal at the same time. But you see, just J hooks. Okay, here we go. And then here we have a battery tray. Okay, so if you take a look right here is where the starter is located. I can actually do a couple of tests with this battery tray in the way, this metal tray, but I'm going to remove it. So I have a couple of fasteners right here and then we'll have a much better view and working room for the starter. Now, if you do have to remove a battery plate like this, as you can see, it's still on there. I have all the top fasteners removed, but something is still holding it on. And typically, they do hide one on you. So in my case, on the left, underneath the, uh, the tray here, there's a fastener. Very tight room, really hard to fit a socket and a ratchet. So grab one of these ratcheting wrenches. It makes all the differences in the world. You could typically pick up a set for like 25, 30 bucks. It's worth every penny. So let's see, here we go. If I can find it here. I just saw it. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is, okay. Okay, so there's the fastener. And here's the tray. So how do we test the solenoid? Well, very simply, we need a digital multimeter. Again, these are inexpensive. Don't get overwhelmed by all of the functions. They're very, very simple to use. So what we need to do is a continuity test. That will verify if two points make a connection, okay? So the symbol that you want to look for, it looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot, okay? So in my case, I'm not on it yet, but if I hit function, right there, I'm on continuity. So if I touch these two, let me uh, strain these out real quick. Okay, if I touch these two, 
I have continuity. That's what we want to hear. Now, if you did see our previous video a few days ago regarding on how to test a vehicle that does not crank, this will sort of be a recap very, very quickly. But let me just give you better access, a better view to the starter. Now, as you can see, we have three leads going to the starter. We have the positive lead. So if I follow this all the way up, it goes to the positive lead to the battery. Then I have an S lead. This just simply comes off, looks just like this. Some starters that may be hardwired on the outside, but you can tell this is the right one because there are typically three connection points. The positive, this little guy, and then your negative, which is right here. So if I did remove this starter, I'm removing one, two, and this guy down here, okay? So the first thing is to check continuity between this terminal, the S terminal, and the armature housing. Now this is not really the best uh, surface to get a good connection point, so you may want to just slightly scuff it up with sandpaper, but I'm just taking the multimeter, one lead, doesn't matter which color, to this S lead, and the other one over here, and we should have to the housing, and we should have continuity, which we do, and that verifies with this test that the solenoid is good. It's that simple. Now a couple of things, if you do this test and you don't have continuity, then the solenoid is bad. You may try tapping the solenoid a couple more times with a hammer, for example. You may be able to get a couple more starts out of it. But nonetheless, you do have to replace the starter uh, eventually. And when you replace the starter, many of them are remanufactured with lifetime warranties. Keep the receipts. Years ago, I did replace one of these starters on a different vehicle after four years. I had to replace it. I went back to the same parts store. The rep could not believe I kept the receipt from four years earlier, and I was able to obtain a brand new starter. So keep the receipts. That's the main thing. So that's the first test. Now the second test, again, we're doing continuity. One lead is going to this S terminal, but now we're touching this lead over here. Not the positive, your other lead. And we should have continuity. And there we go. So again, that verifies that everything is in good shape. If you do these tests and the starter is not giving you that continuity reading, then it needs to be replaced. So that is what it takes to test the starter solenoid. A couple of things before we wrap this up. If you do need to replace the starter, we did this a couple of years ago. I'll include a link in the description box below if you do need a guide. But ultimately, you have two fasteners. There's one on top, another on the bottom. Don't forget your battery connection, so the positive lead, okay, remove that. Your negative, which lives over here, and then of course your S terminal, and this comes right out. Again, check out that link if you need a guide. The other thing is if you're having trouble with your vehicle, you're turning the ignition key and nothing is happening, we just wrapped up a video showing the steps regarding the battery, the terminals, relays. Check that out. You can most likely get your car up and running without paying someone a lot of money to do so. So that being said, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.